You are listening to the emergency broadcast systems. This station broadcasts emergency news and official information on the air for a sign area. Hello guys, Survival Tech Nord here. Today we're going to be talking about the pros and cons of budget radios like the Biofang UV-5R, the UV-82L, and the F9+. Plus. These pros and cons will also be relevant to the new 8-watt variants of these radios. Now I need to start by saying that this video is going to be brutally honest, but by the end of it you'll have all the information you need to make up your mind about whether or not these radios fit your requirements or not. But let's jump straight into it. By far, the number one feature of these radios is the price. But let's be clear here. We can argue about it, we can pretend it's not true, but the best feature of these radios is their price. So why is the price such a big deal? Because the low price creates opportunity. The Urban Prepper makes this point very well in his video entitled Biofang BF F8 High Power Radio Review by the Urban Prepper. One of the points made in the Urban Prepper's video as preppers and survivalists are taking advantage of the low cost of these radios, adding additional comms capabilities and comms redundancy to their emergency and survival gear. But for potential users who are looking to augment emergency communications, we need to make sure that they understand what they gain and what they lose by using these low-cost radios. And for that reason, we need to look at the downsides as well. By far, the biggest drawback with these budget-minded radios is the lack of a DC input port, allowing the user to charge the radio directly from a solar panel, from a car, cigarette lighter, and so on, without having to use the drop-in charger. This is a feature that's already built in on Yezu, Kenwood, and ICOM radios. But with these budget radios, we have to come up with a few workarounds. Firstly, you can order yourself the AA battery box, Secondly, you can get the cigarette lighter adapter cable. And finally, you can get the battery eliminator kit. So if you need to interface with 12 volts DC, either through a solar panel or cigarette lighter, remember that these accessories also add to the price. Moving on. People often wonder why there are so many different versions of the Biofang UV5R, for example. This is a problem of the firmware that is the software running in the radio. It's not upgradable. So even though you have radios that look mechanically identical, new versions of the firmware are running on those platforms. So different radios are given a different designation, UV5RA, UV5RB, and so on. Now even the best of us can't tell which one is which. But in all honesty, the best way I've found to alleviate all of this confusion about the different firmware and radio versions is to find the right radio distributor. Since Radio Oddity sent most of the gear for this series, I've put their link in this video and also in the description. But if you've also got good experience with another retailer, please put it in the comments. Now I've seen an awful lot of videos on YouTube and blog posts which swear that these radios are waterproof and rugged. There's no documentation or specifications to suggest any of this is true. You'll also know from my other videos that if there's no IPX rating, it's probably just marketing brouhaha. Well, the methodology behind this product is to make it so cheap that you don't care if it's dropped or broken. So it doesn't have to be terribly rugged. And although there's nothing that we can do specifically for impact damage, we can protect it from the elements. So what I usually recommend to people who are using budget radios which are not rugged or waterproof is to either make a case or cover or invest in a commercial version of them. Here you can see my radios covered with an Aquapack VHF small waterproof radio case. Now some of you are going to be sitting there saying why the hell would you invest in a radio pouch, a waterproof pouch, for such a low cost radio? And the answer is we actually want the gear to work in the worst of situations when we need it. If your radio is flooded out in a torrential storm because you didn't have it covered, it's of no use to you. Anyway, let's go ahead and move on. So finally, when we're comparing to Yezu or Kenwood radios, there's a couple of more things that are missing from these handheld radios that are important for emergency communications. 
The first is shortwave reception, or what's called the AM broadcast band. And the second is the air band. The workaround for this is having a shortwave radio or scanner which is capable of reception on those bands to augment uh, your budget radio. I augment the UV82L with the Countycom GP5 SSB shortwave radio. The last thing I have on my list is these radios inability to receive two different frequencies or two different bands simultaneously. They always switch between the active band or the other, but if both are active, it's going to choose one or the other. You can't listen to both. And this feature is incredibly important to people or groups who use two different frequencies simultaneously. For example, monitoring the NOAA weather channels on one frequency while monitoring your tactical comms on another. Or having a greater group or community on one frequency and close-knit family, friends, or team members on another. It's all food for thought, guys. For better or for worse, you have the information now, and you can build your communications plan with radio fact rather than marketing fiction. Rock and roll, guys. Like, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Ciao.